Good morning, Hebron Zion Presbyterian Church. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading comes from Luke, first chapter, verse 68 through 79. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of the death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us pray. Holy God, all glory belongs to you. We come to you in prayer to glorify your name, not because of what you do, but because of who you are. We adore you for being our creator. Your unconditional love for us stretches to the highest mountain peaks and reaches to the depths of the seas. It is beyond anything we can fathom. Your love never ends, and great is your faithfulness. You deserve all the glory, honor, and praise we can offer. Forgive us for any prideful thoughts that would bring glory upon ourselves instead of relying on our own abilities we choose to praise you and acknowledge that you have everything working for our good. We give glory to you and to the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hebron Zion family and friends, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord has been good to us. And so as we prepare to observe and celebrate Advent and Christmas, we should do so with glad hearts, knowing that had God not been on our side, where would we be? Friends, let us join our voices together singing one of the great hymns of the church, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God in confidence, confident in God's grace. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Holy and righteous God, far too often we are a far cry from the holiness you invite us into, and often we fail to live up to your righteous standards for how we are called to live. Refine us with your righteous refiner's fire to remove all our sinful impulses and impurities. Cleanse us with the fuller soap to make us pure and holy once again. Help us to live in a way that would be pleasing to you, our Lord. Amen. We are not perfect, but we do not need to be. God in Christ is, and God in Christ has taken care of us and this world once again. Every valley shall be filled, and the rough ways made smooth. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and freed. May your, fe may your ears hear this good news, and your eyes see the salvation of God. welcome you and we're so glad that you continue to tune in week after week to worship with us. I have just one announcement, well two. Uh, the International African American Museum has kicked off its uh, school collection drive and Hebron Zion is a drop-off site so we encourage you to, if you are able, to purchase school supplies for students in Charleston County, the Charleston County School District, there is a box here on campus that you can drop off your supplies. Uh, that drive started on December the 1st and will run through December 31st. Also, we will have in-person watch night service on Friday, December the 31st. We will let you know the time once it has been set. Friends, it is always good for us to come together to worship God in spirit and in truth. And in this season of Advent and Christmas, it is extra special because it is an opportunity for us to do some reflecting and think about some things and try to get closer to God. And not just in this season, but it is something we should strive to do every day. At this time, I extend to you a hearty act of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Friends, let us now humble ourselves and go before the throne of grace. Holy and eternal God, oh God, we come on this day with glad hearts. God, we come to say thank you for all that you have done for us, for getting us through another day, for getting us through another holiday, Lord God, amid a pandemic. 
God, we thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us another opportunity to do your good and perfect will. Lord God, as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear a word from on high, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds and our ears, Lord God. Remove those things that would interfere in what you would have us to hear and know. Help us, Lord God, to hear your word and not only hear it, God, but to be doers of your holy word. Lord, we thank you for this great ministry here at Hebron Zion Presbyterian Church USA. We thank you for the members, Lord God. We thank you for their witness, Lord God. We thank you for everything this ministry in this village John's Island, this ministry, everything that it continues to do, Lord God, to uplift those who are in need. God, we pray for those who are on our sick and homebound list. We ask that you cover them, Lord God, with your tender mercies. Keep them enclosed, Lord God, safe and out of harm's way. Lord, bring about healing. Bring about restoration. Bring about peace, O oh Lord, to those who are at home. We just ask that you continue to do what you do so well. Lead us and guide us and keep us. Lord, we pray for the world and all its brokenness. Asking, God, that you bring us together. We are so divided, Lord God. We can't it seems as if we can't agree on anything. Help us, Lord God, to come together as a nation. Help us to come together as your people. Help us to come together in our communities. God, help us to know and understand that we must do better. And in order for us to do better, Lord God, we must humble ourselves. And God, sometimes it's not easy to be humble because... Our pride gets in the way. Our egos get in the way. God, sometimes we need to be reminded that you and you alone are in charge. And so, God, we just ask that you forgive us when we fall short. Forgive us, Lord God, when we try to get ahead of you. Help us, Lord God, to be more loving and compassionate. Help us, Lord God, to help those who cannot help themselves. Lord, we pray for those in elected offices all over this great land. God, we ask that you continue to allow the Holy Spirit to roam the halls of those places where laws and rules are made, Lord God. Remind those who are making the laws. Remind them, Lord God, that they are to care for all of your people and not just some. Lord, we pray for those who continue to work on the front lines trying to get a handle on COVID-19. God, we pray for those doctors and nurses and scientists and everybody, Lord God, trying to figure it all out. God, we ask that you help us to come together to realize the importance of taking care of ourselves. Many are afraid, Lord God, to get the vaccine. God, help them with that. Help them to know and understand that when we do what we need to do, Lord God, for the public good, we all benefit from it. God, we pray for protection from this latest strain, Lord God, of COVID-19. God, help us. We've been going through now for nearly two years. Lord, we need you. We've grown weary of it all. Strengthen us, God. Let us not give up hope. Let us not lose faith. Help us, God, to be responsible citizens. Lord, we pray for our children. We pray for those parents who lost children this week in Michigan in the school shooting. God, we ask your protection of all our children. Lord, our children should not have to go to school and worry about whether or not they'll make it back home. Help us, Lord God, to be responsible. 
Help us, Lord God, to keep our children safe. But God, help us to make laws and do the right thing to help bring an end to some of this senseless violence. Heal the land, oh God. Heal the land, oh God, for we are broken. Lord, help us because we are lost. We think that we know God, but in reality, we really don't know. And so, Lord, on this morning, as we prepare to worship you, Lord, remind us of our purpose. Give us a word. Give us hope. Lord, I pray for myself, asking that you do what you do so well. Help me to proclaim your word, Lord God, so that it will not come back void. Lord, let one person be able to hear what you need them to hear. Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we adore you. And we make this petition, O oh Lord, in your name, in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. As we reflect on the foundation of our faith in our lives, we gather together around the candle of peace. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. Peace that rests between us and our grief. Peace around our anxiety. Peace between us and our self-criticism. Peace at the core of our being. Peace hovering through and in our world. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. So today we light the candle of peace as a reminder and a prayer. Let it be so. Amen. Holy God, through Isaiah and John, you sent your word into the wilderness crying out to repent, seek forgiveness, and prepare the way of the Lord. Now prepare the way in us and in our world for the coming of your living word, so that all flesh may know your saving grace, through Christ who is coming to reign. Amen. On behalf of Hebron Zion Presbyterian Church, we would like to thank you for your continued contributions and support as we continue to do God's work and upbuild his kingdom here on earth. Thank you.
Sermonic text comes to us from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former years. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Pray with me if you will. Holy, holy, holy God, just as your word came to John in the wilderness, send it once again to us now in this place. Speak to us your gospel message so that we may cry out with the good news once more. We love you, God. Amen. I'd like for you to think with me this morning from the sermon title, Are You Prepared? Are You Prepared? Preparing for the holidays, it takes a lot of work. Last week, we were preparing for Thanksgiving festivities. We were cooking and baking and gathering with family and friends. Now here we are, for the second time amid a pandemic, preparing to observe and celebrate Advent and Christmas. So while some of us are still recovering from last week's meal, which turned into breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the next day and the day after, we are now focused on getting ready for Christmas. We have cleaned our houses from top to bottom before we even think about decorating. 
We have picked out the perfect Christmas tree. We have planned out our meals. We have decided the number of parties we will attend, and the list goes on and on. Even here at church, some of our members have been busy decorating the sanctuary for the holidays, and that in itself takes a lot of work. Pulling out Christmas trees and Christmas wreaths and the Advent wreath and candles and ribbons and bowls and all being done with joy and with great anticipation to celebrate Jesus' birth. For many of us, the season the seasons bring out the best in us. And for others, it is a time of great sadness for various, for various reasons, sickness, the loss of loved ones, the loss of a job. In this morning's text, we find the prophet Malachi telling us about another prophet's coming, John the Baptist, who in turn will introduce Jesus' first coming. The prophet Malachi calls us to a deeper kind of preparation as we anticipate the coming of Christ again at Christmas. He calls us to serious spiritual preparation. The book of Malachi is the last book in the Hebrew portion of our Bible. His is an appropriate prophecy to precede the New Testament because Malachi encouraged the people of Israel to get ready for the coming of the Messiah. That also makes him an appropriate prophet for us as we prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas. Malachi lived about 450 to 500 years before Christ and as we discovered last week the Babylonians had conquered the southern kingdom in the year 587. The people were deported to Babylon, but King Cyrus later released them around the year 538. So in Malachi's time, the community had long since returned from exile. The temple and the walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt. But my friends, there was a slackness of spirit and a slackness in worship. And the cause of it was not corruption, but profound despair born of life falling short of divine promises. You see, the age of God's final triumph and reign had been expected to begin when the temple was consecrated. Yet many years had passed since the consecration, and the community was still waiting. Their city was still small and insignificant. The temple did not compare favorably to the one of former days. Their enthusiasm had all but evaporated. The community had deep doubts about the worth of their faith. Have you ever had a crisis of faith? Malachi's prophecy gives us hope to a people who believe God has abandoned them and serves as a reminder to us that Jesus is coming back into our hearts yet again. And so as we are watching and waiting, what are we doing to prepare for Jesus' return? Or have we decided in our minds that Jesus is not coming back, therefore there is no need for preparation? Who are we willing to listen to in regard to Jesus' coming back? Who is God's messenger that calls you to prepare? Who is your John the Baptist crying in the wilderness? As I mentioned a couple Sundays back, sometimes we have to be mindful about who we listen to because everybody that brings a message is not always the right message. And so in this text, we know that we must prepare. Preparation is key. Are you really ready for Christ's return? No, seriously, do you believe that you are ready for Jesus' return? As we reflect over this Advent season, what are we thinking about? Are we thinking about what Jesus' life means for us? 
Are we striving to live better lives? How are we preparing for Jesus' return? What condition do you want to be found in when Jesus returns? My friends, when we prepare for anything, we always want to make sure everything is in order. When we prepare for a new baby, we prepare a room. When we are preparing to say farewell to loved ones, we plan the service carefully, making sure our loved ones are celebrated well. Jesus is coming is not to destroy us, but my friends, it is to save us. But there are some things we must do in order to be ready. We must be humble enough and willing to admit that we are sinners. We cannot seek forgiveness or reconciliation with an unrepentant heart. My friends, God desires to be in relationship with us, but we must be candid with God about our condition. We must desire to do better. Sometimes we spend our whole lives at war with others and even with ourselves, expecting things to get better. Now, this is not to say that you should not have any emotions about how people treat you or have treated you in the past. This is not to say that you should just forgive and forget seeking forgiveness from someone you have harmed without first admitting your offense. You must admit, you must repent. To do otherwise is a shallow attempt of trying to be civilized. True spiritual preparation calls for repentance. For some of us, repentance is a scary word. It is a scary concept, but watch this. Do you know that there is freedom in repenting for our sins? There is freedom in repentance. Do you understand that once we repent, we have now opened our hearts for God to do wonderful and miraculous things in our lives? When we repent, it takes a weight off of us. It frees us up. And sometimes we are afraid of that freedom because we're not used to it. But my friends, with Jesus' return, don't you want to be free? Don't you want to be open? Don't you want to be prepared for Jesus to do whatever needs to be done in your life? Preparation is key. But you also have to pay attention to the message. Sometimes we get so hung up on the messenger, we miss the message. My friends, God can use anybody at any time to deliver a message that God wants and needs us to hear and receive. Often we believe only certain people can deliver a message from God, or anyone for that matter. And this, my friends, is where we usually get tripped up in receiving a word or a message or anything. When John the Baptist was preaching and baptizing folks, he was not decked out in fine linen robes and satin stoles and hard bottom shoes. No, John was rough and uncut and unkept in appearance, but John was about God's business of doing what he was called to do. My friends, God can use those closest to us to tell us what we need to hear. God can use a preacher to tell you what you need to hear. Some people receive God's messages of love and repentance and redemption through music. Some people receive God's message through studying scripture and prayer. But watch this. If your heart, that is, if your spirit is not open to receive whatever it is God is trying to tell you, then you will definitely miss the point. My friends, pastors are called to do as Malachi and John the Baptist did, to deliver the message of repentance, to deliver the message of redemption, to deliver the message of hope. But it's not just the pastor's job. 
one of the first things they taught me in seminary was that everybody's a minister. Some people just don't know it. And being a minister doesn't necessarily mean being in a pulpit. You can be a minister on your job. Whatever your gifts are, use them. You can be a minister in the classroom. Whatever it is, use it. You can be a minister in a truck. Use it. Whatever your gifts are, use those gifts to minister to those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Use your gifts to deliver God's message of love. There's a story about a preacher who was grabbing his coat and suitcase to board a train for a preaching tour up north. His wife stood at the door handing him his hat and she laughed to herself and said under her breath, you are not doing all that you do because you love Jesus. The preacher responded, if you're so smart, tell me why I'm doing it then. She said, because you're insecure vain and vicious and driven. The preacher brushed off his wife's rash comment, but as he sat on the train that day, he came to hear her words as the judgment of God, and he knew that she was right. Again, friends, God can use anybody to get a message through. I remember many years ago, a former co-worker and I had gotten into a disagreement about something work-related. And in the midst of our conversation, she became very belligerent, which took me by surprise. I recognized that we would not come to a resolution, and so we both sort of walked away from the situation, feeling out of sorts and hurt because we had never had such an exchange. Truth be told, we did not speak to each other for several days. One night, as my daughter and I were going through our Christmas decorations, I came across an ornament that I wanted to keep, though it was in poor condition. And my daughter looked at me and said, Mama, you need to let that go. Unbeknownst to her, in my spirit, I received what she said, and that was the answer to the problem I was having with my co-worker. I needed to let it go. And friends, sometimes we don't know when to let things go. Sometimes somebody has to tell us. It took my daughter telling me. It took Malachi telling us. It took John telling us. It took Jesus not only telling us, but dying for us. My friends, there is a message for each and every one of us, but you've got to be willing to hear it. And so, yeah, we, we, we've got to prepare. Preparation is key. Yes, we've got to pay attention to the message as well as the messenger, but overall, we've just got to pay attention. What must God do to get your attention? Will it take sickness? The loss of a loved one? Bankruptcy? We are in the midst of a global pandemic. And yet even a pandemic has not been enough to capture some people's attention. Take a look around. There are still wars going on. Poverty and hunger continue to increase, not decrease. People who are desperately seeking a new life, a new beginning, continue to die in our oceans and borders everywhere because we are slow to respond. And we fail to see God in those who are seeking a new situation, a new life. We are missing the point and the message. We continue to fail to see God in those who do not look like us. Please don't misunderstand me. As the beloved community of faith, we cannot solve all of the world's problems. And God does not expect us to. But if we desire to see God, we must be willing 
to do the work God has called us to. Will that work always be popular? No. Will it always be comfortable? Absolutely not. But it will, be it will always be necessary for us to do the work. The heavy lifting of helping the oppressed and standing up for the rejected and the dejected and the neglected. This passage tells us for he is like a refiner's fire. My friends, I don't know how much you know about refining metal. But you need to understand that the process involves metal being melted over a hot fire. And as that metal melts, pure metal remains at the bottom while the impurities float to the top to be drawn off and discarded. Metal refineries, they're hot and dirty and dangerous places. And the process by which metals are purified is a very uncomfortable at, and at best a very deadly process. My friends, the impure must be separated from the pure. The wheat from the shaft, the goats from the sheep. God desires to clean us up because God knows we cannot do it by ourselves. God knows what our faults and flaws are. My friends, it is not God's intention to destroy us but God is trying to save us from ourselves. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable. But that process also requires us to be humble. And again, we struggle with humility. And so as in this season, as we continue to observe Advent and we prepare for Christmas, Friends, think about this. Think about this. Are you truly preparing yourself for Jesus' return? Are we ready to rid ourselves of those things that keep us separated from God? Are we really paying attention to what's going on around us? Are we willing to receive a message from God even if it comes from somebody who we deem unworthy? What are we doing to prepare? And not just in this season, and not just in this hour, and not just in this month, but what are we doing to prepare? Because one day that day will come. And the question remains, will you be ready? In the name of the one who was and is, and who is to come. Amen. We open the doors of this great ministry to you if you have a desire to become a member or to form a closer relationship with Christ. We invite you to do that. We would love to walk alongside you on that journey. If you have questions and you don't know where to start, we would love to walk alongside you. You are welcome to reach out to the church Tuesdays through Fridays, and I am usually here to be of service. Amen? This is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, and from north and south, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Holy Lord Almighty, everlasting God, you have formed the universe in your wisdom and created all things by your power. 
and you have set us in families on the earth to live with you in faith. We praise you for good gifts of bread and wine and for the table you spread in the world as a sign of your love for all in Christ. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Your ways are just and true. With all the faithful from every time and place, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, for you alone are holy. eternal God. We thank you for your son Jesus who lived with us sharing joy and sorrow. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and was murdered by those he loved. We praise you that he is not dead, but is risen to rule the world, and that he is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power, to hurt or divide us, so that when you bring in your promised kingdom, we will celebrate victory with him. Remembering the Lord Jesus, we break bread and share one cup, announcing his death for the sins of the world and telling his resurrection to all the nations. Great God, give your Holy Spirit in the breaking of bread so that we may be drawn together and joined to Christ the Lord, receive new life, and remain as glad and faithful people until we feast with him in glory. kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and after giving thanks to God, broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in memory of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and he poured it saying, this is my blood, a sign of the new covenant. Every time you drink this cup, you do so in remembrance of me and until my return. Friends, let us commune. Every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. God, our help, we thank you for this supper shared in the spirit with your son Jesus, who makes us new and strong who brings us life eternal. We praise you for giving us all good gifts in him and pledge ourselves to serve you even as in Christ you have served us. Amen. Friends, go in peace, live free, serve the Lord, and love your neighbors, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Friends, I charge you to go out not only this week, but every day of your life. Make preparations. Be prepared, not only for what happens around you, but be prepared for Christ's return. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace, now and forevermore. Amen.